before we transitioned all of our vehicles to be electric vehicles, we owned a gas guzzling Honda Pilot. It was our primary family hauler and enabled us to tow our small 14 foot fishing boat to go play on the water and fish. And also we were able to put our 17 foot canoe on the roof of the Honda Pilot, which by the way, if you've never put a five horsepower outboard motor on a canoe, you should try it. It's a ton of fun. When we decided to replace our Honda Pilot with a 2015 Tesla Model S 85D, I knew we'd have to make some concessions for a couple of years until we could buy the Model X, which has the ability to tow. Until the Cybertruck unveiling that is, and then I realized that's going to be the vehicle for me. And if you're interested in more details on that, you can click on this card here that I'll have pop out about a video I made on that. The main concessions we gave up moving from our Honda Pilot to the Tesla uh, are off-roading capabilities as well as the ability to tow. The Pilot had roof rails that we used for the canoe, uh, but I had to build an additional support to ensure stability. And I could in theory do that on my Model S as Tesla does sell roof rails for my version of the Model S with the sunroof. Um, however, I, I'm, I'm more wary of damaging the Model S that the whole roof is glass and uh, getting the canoe up and down as well as strapping it on. I'd rather just tow it behind the car with a light trailer if at all possible. As a homeowner, there have been many times during the years that I've needed to transport something that just won't fit inside of a passenger vehicle or it's too dirty to consider doing that. Uh, whether it be furniture for the house or mulch for the garden, the Model S is just not sufficient in most of those situations. So occasionally we borrowed a truck from, from friends or family, but I don't really like to do that on a regular basis. After we've owned our Model S for a year, I, I decided to go ahead and install a trailer hitch on it to be able to handle these needs uh, with my own equipment. Also, we would again be able to transport our bicycles with the trailer hitch bike rack that we already have. I understand the limitations of weight and range when towing things with a sedan and, and those limitations are fine with what I need it for. Down the road, when I get this, my Cybertruck, I will use the Model S trailer hitch less, but it is still a nice to have option as it may come up occasionally that we need to do it with that particular vehicle. Plus, I figured if I installed it myself, I'd get enough use out of it in the two years it will take to get the Cybertruck to make the cost of the trailer hitch on the Model S worth it. In doing some research, I found there's really only one option for the Model S, and that's the Torque Lift Eco Hitch, and the Stealth option is what I selected. The hidden option would not be a good idea, as the receiver would be fixed in place and the ground clearance underneath it is not very high. It's good enough when I'm towing and being careful, but I certainly wouldn't want to have to always be careful about that ground clearance back there. The Invisi option doesn't work with the Model S hatchback design. The Invisi hitch is meant to be behind the license plate and the Model S, the license plate is on the hatch which swings upward so the trailer hitch obviously can't go there. All right, so let's get into the parts I purchased to make this work and their prices. All these parts and the links to purchase them are in the video description down below. First off, there's the Eco Hitch itself, which I found from various online retailers for exorbitant prices, and it was cheapest from Torque Lift directly for $378. I looked it up again while making this video, only three months after having purchased it, and, and it's now $408, so it obviously has gone up there as well. The receiver uses a 15 16 bolt, so if you don't already have a socket to fit that, you'll need one of those, plus potentially the 3 8 inch driver as well. The socket I got is from the Tecton uh, company for $5.50. Uh, the driver, I happen to have a spare one laying around, but this one will work just fine for $14. Uh, these are basic tools that you may already have, and there's you know countless companies out there that make these. And that's only really all you need for the trailer hitch itself if you're going to be using it as an accessory rack only. Uh, and there's lots of things you can do with an accessory rack. There's a bike rack, of course, there's also the basket that you can get and plenty of other things. Now keep in mind the ground clearance isn't substantial, so I do recommend if you get anything that will be coming out from the back of the car a bit, to get one with a rise in it, preferably about a six inch rise. So that will give you added uh, protection from is scraping when you're driving on uneven terrain. I'm working on editing a video about how I installed the trailer hitch on the car, which involves taking off the rear bumper. So if you're interested in, in learning how I did that and getting the details, then click subscribe to my channel, change that bell notification to all, and you will get notified when I upload that video. And I will also put a card here uh, that will pop out once it's been created. 
Now in my case, because I wanted to be able to tow trailers, uh, that introduces the need for trailer light wiring. And that ended up taking far more time to figure out than just the trailer hitch installation itself. I'm also working on a video of how I did the trailer light wiring and that will save you a ton of time. I, I spent troubleshooting trying to figure out which wires to use. Um, now, I do recommend still that you get this particular tool that allows you to just plug it in and see quickly what the, the lighting is doing uh, because you'll probably need it for your own verification process as you connect these up yourself. Now there are cheaper trailer wiring options out there uh, that you could pick up for like $20, but they require splicing directly into the wires that carry 12 volts to the trailer lights. In the case of a Tesla, I didn't want to be splicing into the wires first off. Also, I believe the wires are just carrying data in my Tesla, uh, not directly uh, current. So uh, although that probably depends on the year of your Tesla, I, I've seen some videos where they spliced in, but it was an early Model S. Ultimately, after lots of research, I just decided to go with the uh, Tecuncha trailer wiring harness for $110. It has clips that clamp around the wire and detect the signal to the lights. Then it has its own 12 volt source to power the lights. This solution requires running a wire all the way to the front of the car to connect directly to the 12 volt battery up there. There is a kit that can be purchased from eTrailer that has the Tecuncha module plus the extra wires and fuse and whatnot, but it's way cheaper just to buy the device directly from Amazon. Uh, and then also buy this trailer light power module wiring kit. And then also uh, I got some 3M tape, tape to make sure I could uh, keep things in place where needed. Like I said, the ground clearance isn't substantial. So depending on the height of your trailer, you may need a six inch rise ball hitch. Um, like this one right here. If you have air suspension on your Tesla, that enables you to have additional ground clearance. However, the suspension levels above standard will lower back to standard after a certain speed or distance has been reached. So that's really only an option for navigating specific obstacles. I found once I get out of residential streets that have the deeper ditches, I don't have any problems with scraping on major roads um, with the suspension at standard height. Now, my vehicle has the rear facing seats. And now that I have a 12 volt power source in the rear of the vehicle, I wanted to take advantage of this circuit to install a 12 volt power port. This could be useful in the future if the kids have electronic devices back there that they want to charge, or maybe um, an electric cooler for road trips. I also wanted to add additional ventilation for the rear facing seats. The cool air just doesn't get back there well enough. Even if you have recirculation turned off, it just gets pretty hot. So I wanted to try putting two fans back there and I'll be creating a separate video about the fans installation and, and how that went. And so I'll put a card here as well once that video has been uploaded. And so I picked up these two fans for $18 each and they have worked really well. To make the fans work, I also needed a cigarette lighter socket and cigarette lighter socket splitter, which has the added advantage of adding USB ports back there for charging devices. There are of course many various devices you could buy for this purpose. Uh, these are just what I used. I've now had this hitch, trailer light wiring and 12 volt power port added to the car for three months. And I've really enjoyed these improvements. I've taken our boat to a couple of different lakes. I've towed a couple of different trailers with it. And I've now purchased my own small four foot by six foot utility trailer uh, that has the same maximum limits as the trailer hitch of 2000 pounds. I don't plan to put a whole lot of weight on it though. It's just for random household projects like getting mulch for the garden, hauling large or dirty objects to the dump, transporting furniture, etc. Now we won't have to borrow trucks anymore. The entire project of the trailer hitch and light wiring and additional cooling for the rear seats cost me $590, not including the parts that I already had. And I think it'll be very worth the price over the next many years that I own this vehicle. I'm going to be making some additional videos later related to the power consumption of these different trailers that I've pulled around and give you an idea of the range hit. I will also say in brief that weight is less important and wind resistance is far more important. So for instance, towing my boat has less of a hit on range at 70 miles per hour than a large but empty utility trailer that has a large ramp sticking up like a sail on the back of it also going 70 miles per hour. So subscribe to my channel, change that bell notification to all and you will get notified when I upload these videos and as I explore the towing capabilities of our Model S. I also have an upcoming video reviewing our rooftop power production now three years in. Thanks for watching. Are you loving that, Lydia? <laughs>
I guess alternatively, rather than sticking it to the window, I could always just let them hold the <laughs> hold the fans on their faces. 